I'm Firefighter Ray, and I am in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. I am going to be cooking with Dane George and Victor Robidoux. We are making stuffed peppers, and we're going to be taking on the Springfield Fire Department because they got a little rival together. We're going to see which one cooks better. We cooked in Springfield, now I'm cooking in Wilbraham. And let's get ready for this episode of Firehouse Kitchen. We are in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. Beautiful, beautiful firehouse. A gorgeous kitchen. It's, it's like, it looks like a house's kitchen. That's how nice it is. And we got tight quarters here. I am with firefighter Dane George. What's up, Dane? Nothing, how, are how are you? And Victor Rubidoux. Hey, All nice right. to meet you, brother. Like Thanks that for last having name. us. Rubidoux. That's it. <laughs> that we. It's, it's very French. Is yes. that the, the French? He's going to come out. He's going to give us some French. <laughs> some French. No swear words. No swear words. Yeah, no swear words on firehouse kitchen. Just, just eating good, happy words. Um, what are we making today? Uh, so today we're going to do a uh, Cajun stuffed bell pepper. Wow. Um, okay. A lot of flavor, a lot of ingredients. It's all local stuff, pretty much. Okay. So uh, it's good to go. All right. So stuffed peppers. Um, let's get started. What's the first thing right. I'm gonna do? Uh, Vic here is gonna help me with uh, the pepper prep. Uh, basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the top off the uh, bell pepper. Okay. So we cut uh, the top off. Take off uh, all the seeds and the stems on the inside. <clears throat> Clean it up a little. Give it a wash under the uh, under the sink. Okay. Make sure all the seeds are out. And uh, then we're going to parboil them for about three minutes. Oh, then you're actually going to hard boil the pepper? Parboil, yeah. Now, what does that do? That um, softens it up that a little bit. So, so parboil. Right. That's called parboil. Right, exactly. So, this is a finished product. Okay. Correct. So, this one's already cut, this one's yep. already clean. All we're going to do is parboil that, uh, and then the stuff that we're going to be cooking on the stove. It's going to go in that, going to throw it in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes, and you can have the best stuffed bell pepper in your life. I love it. Now, I was cooking in um, Springfield <laughs> with uh, Louis Rodriguez, uh, Robert Duffy, Captain Robert Duffy, yep. and they were busting, you know, pretty much your chops without you guys being there, oh. about them having, you know, there's no way. Yeah. You know, when I, when I said, oh, I said, I think, um, I don't know what they're making, but if you remember, who did we call? Who did we talk to? Did they called over? Uh, uh, and you Duffy told them they're making Duffy. 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 And uh, Duffy called, and he he yelled out, "What are we? They're making peppers. There's no way they're gonna because they made this big shot. <laughs> they're making peppers. So uh, I think uh, let's take these guys on. You know, we gotta put you guys. You had a cooking contest against them once before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, How did that on, go? Uh, it was on Mass Appeal. Uh, they really the uh, the two hosts of Mass Appeal came and. Uh, they thought it was pretty outrageous what we did. Springfield at the time did uh, like a pulled pork or a roasted uh, Spanish pork or something like that. So, uh, who do you think had the best meal? Oh, uh, we did. During that Mass Appeal show, Dane saved the day. Springfield, we had this competition. It sounds like they're busting on us. <laughs> that particular day, you made that awesome yep, yeah, it was stuffed a pork chop with Andouille sauce. Southern sausage. stuffed uh, pork chop. The pork chop's about two inches thick. Okay. Cut it down the middle. Uh, stuffed it with uh, an andouille and a cornbread stuffing. See, you see the sausage thing. Like, mm. Andouille is very flavorful. Yeah, I yeah. like it. So, uh, southern style good. cooking to me is absolutely the best flavor you can get. So, uh, we did a, a the stuffed pork chop, and with that, I did uh, some homemade collard greens. Homemade collard greens. Uh, and uh, it was really good. And uh, hands down, I think. It, it and it won, did it win? Did they? Did uh, they, have they, to... they never told us who oh, won. Oh, so it was a happy. But contract. the host was like, he's never tasted. He wanted me to come back and do a segment on their show permanently of cooking. So I thought that was kind of an honor. That's to... that's an honor. I'd say that. But the money wasn't there. That's why you're back. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, they pay way. They, this, this pays better. They pay these guys a will, a will, yeah, way too much. All right, let's get to cooking. We can talk about right, stuff. We'll talk about you guys being paramedics, and uh, <laughs> that's awesome. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But let's get back to cooking. Okay. So right. here's my pepper. All right. So there's your pepper. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna put uh, about a quarter cup of olive oil in uh, in the pan here. Spring loaded. 
There you go. Go ahead and pour that in. Beautiful. Good. 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 So we're going to heat this up. Blanched apples. So we're going to wait for the oil to get a little bit warm. The recipe calls for a one and a half to one and a quarter onions that we're going to be uh, chopping up, and I've already got some pre-chopped okay. uh, onions All that right. we're going to saute. So let's get the pre-chopped onions in. Onions and garlic. Oh, nothing oh, yeah. better than that. Nothing. I'll wait till this starts cooking yeah, up here. Yeah, onions and garlic. Hey, you want to go ahead and I'm going to blanch the peppers? Yeah, go ahead and uh, right. start blanching the peppers. Those are going to go for about three minutes. Three minutes on the peppers? Three minutes on the peppers. Okay, so three minutes on the peppers, just to soften them up. I guess if you do it too long, they'd soften up to full of water. Right, yeah. We don't want that exactly. bad. We want to keep them uh, stuffable. All right, so talk to me about paramedics. Let's see. Uh, town of Wilbraham. Hey, we, uh, we're 24 hour operation, 365. Uh, around the clock, we have three ambulances in town. Uh, paramedics, what's it all about? It's all about, we call bringing the emergency room right to the scene. There's a whole heck of a lot we can do in a matter of matter of minutes. It takes a lot of training, Ooh, I like a lot that. of dedication. We are Wilbraham. <laughs> we bring the emergency room to you. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, a lot of training, like I said. Uh, Dane mentioned that he went to, uh, he did his ride time in New York City. I did my ride time in Rockland County. Okay. So I was across on the Hudson, the nice section of town, running through the <laughs> streets of Nyack and that kind of, it was a good time. Uh, yeah. Great experience, yeah. great exposure. Um, now, does Boston get jealous that you guys go down to New York for training? Aren't they like, hey, hey? Boston, Boston runs a very tight EMS academy, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's they're very selective on who they pick as far as uh, who gets the ride, who gets hired by uh, Boston EMS. Yeah. So. But I'm, I'm just saying even just um, training. How come you guys don't train with Boston you go down to New York? I'm saying, do they get a little jealous? It's like, just, hey, uh, why do you guys go to New York? We're right here. We're Boston. It's how it's the true. school is set up. Um, each school has their own affiliation with uh, certain hospitals and certain... Uh, what about protocols? Like, is right, protocols exactly. closer yep. than what, to yep. what New York City is? Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. Okay, that's cool. How's those peppers looking? Peppers are looking good. We've got about another minute or so about on them. Blanched nicely. Without overcooking them. We don't want the things fall in the pot. We want them fall in the pot in our mouth. In our mouth. <laughs> not, on, not, on the, not in the water. Um, so, uh, so you like Rockland County? Rockland County, Nyack is a fun town, man. Real, real nice town. Yeah. You know, close enough to, uh, close enough to Jersey, but still far enough away where we don't get, want to get in a lot of trouble while we're there. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a chance to uh, take a ride over to uh, uh, Choppers, Orange County Choppers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a place. A heck of a lot different on TV than it is in person. Boy, you get and, in there, and it's they, huge. And they are very courteous to the firefighters. They, they are, they've they been are. very no, good. They, uh, those, are good, those are some good guys. All right, Dave, what are we doing next? All right, so now we're gonna uh, add three cloves of garlic. Of course, I love garlic, so it's a little bit of more than three cloves there. We're gonna cook that in. Garlic and onion, the two things garlic that make kissing onion. so much better. Garlic and onion. <laughs> I think I've said that like three or four times. That's what I was kidding. Because no matter what, we're always sauteing garlic, we're always sauteing onions. You know, it's just, it is. It's, it, when it's you cook it for five, it brings everything out. Absolutely. Yes, they are. It's great when you have a patient, though. Yes. Nice breath. Yes. Yeah. Usually, if they're unconscious, they wake right up. Yes. <laughs> It's better than the ammonia, the ammonia salts that you put, used to put under their nose. We used to carry, put it under their nose to get them awake. We had, uh, we had an FDNY EMT on the show. And, uh, you know, and I was saying, you know, one thing in the fire department is you guys have always had EMT and fire department pretty much yep. together. When they mixed them together in New York City fire department about, five, about 15 years ago, um, you know, it was a big deal. Firemen didn't want it. Absolutely. It was that whole us and them thing. Yes. And, uh, you know, we'd be sitting around the table and they, and they would be talking, guys would be talking, oh man, the EFTs, they shouldn't get paid as much as they shouldn't wear our patch, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, are you kidding me? Their job, you know, our job is dangerous. Their job is harder. You know, you gotta sit in that ambulance, you're dealing with people, you got somebody's life on, on the line. You try, you know, you're making sure, you're trying to save them from death. Um, and I said on a funny note, and, I said, and they throw up on you sometimes. <laughs> I said, they deserve more money. They get thrown up on. I was like, are you kidding me? So, uh, so I said, great. When that show gets in, I said, the FDNY is going to be like, Ray, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> oh, I thought you were a fireman's fireman. 
But um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's hand in hand, EMT, because our, our job, you know, besides a fireman going into fires, EMTs are there to do the same thing, they're there to save lives. You know, that's what we do. The big campaign that's happening with the Department of Public Health in Massachusetts is this uh, big stroke campaign. Uh, early activation, notification, getting people to the hospital quicker. Uh, there have been, there's a lot of like, a lot of commercials, a lot of literature, there's a lot of public edu education that's going out there. Uh, it's called FAST, uh, call, Act FAST 911, and um, the FAST stands for face to arm speech and the time frame which it happens. So um, if you notice uh, uh, somebody that has a little bit of a, a facial droop, it could be an early sign of stroke. Um, if you notice an arm drift, if they're both in the upright position, could be also could be a sign of all of these things combined. Um, in addition to a facial droop, uh, some speech impediment that's noticed uh, could be another possible sign of stroke. And of course, the time is essential in getting them to the hospital very quickly. All of the hospitals in Massachusetts are certified uh, stroke centers, so time is very important because they have a narrow window of opportunity in which they can actually administer clot-busting meds mm -hmm. into the patient. So the longer you wait. Uh, the less viable you could become, or eligible, I should say, and having these meds uh, be placed on board. My uh, my father had a stroke. Um, a, 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 no, it wasn't a severe stroke. Okay, my dad's okay. He's 80 years old. He was a fireman, 32 years. Um, when my my mom uh, unfortunately passed away of cancer, when she was first diagnosed, a lot of stress, you know, with, uh, on the family, nine kids. M one day, my dad uh, my dad banged nails on the side. He was uh, hanging siding, and we're all yeah. me and my brother Joey are working with him, and. Uh, we're cutting the siding, and my dad goes, Ray, come over here, I can't cut this. Yeah. So I come over and I grab the snips, like paper. Yeah. I go, Dad, what's the matter? He goes, ah, oh, my arm. My arm, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, you know, you know, it hurts a little bit. And uh, he's like, all right, guys, get back to work. I'm like, Dad, you could, I go, Dad, you can be like having a heart attack or a stroke right now. No, I'm not having a stroke, get back to work. And me and my brother Joey, my dad is old school, like, you're not stopping the job. You know, right. we gotta get this job done. You gotta get it done. And my brother Joey and I said, uh, Dad, we're not, we're not doing any more work unless, unless we, um, unless you go to the hospital. And he actually, he drove himself. He drove himself. And he was having a, he was going to have a, if he didn't go, he would have had a massive stroke. And they, uh, they put him right on the thinners and they, and they, and they got him. So it's a very serious thing to stroke. And that's a very cool thing to do. All right, so what's going on here? It looks different now. Wow. All right, so uh, what we've done was uh, <laughs> add uh, four teaspoons of Creole seasoning. Uh, we put in our andouille sausage. Okay. Uh, and we also put in our pound of shrimp. So we're going to let that marry for a little bit. Cook okay. that up. Uh, cook it until the game. This is a cooking paint. show. Everybody wanted to see those go in, but it's okay. It looks, it looks delicious. Well, you guys are talking. Yeah. I to play, you know. Hey man, I'm talking to you. This is what's happening. It's going to work. Things going to work. All right, let's get. So we got andouille sausage. We got andouille sausage. We got uh, shrimp, and we put in our spices, basically, uh, which is uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of oregano. Uh, five teaspoons of Creole seasoning and a little bit of black pepper to uh, sweeten it up a little bit. Okay. Now, while this is cooking, we're going to go to a safety tip right now, and uh, we'll be right back. And I must say, I am having a very, very fun time in Wilbraham right now. It's good. We have a good conversation. It is. Good it's a good time. Excellent. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray. Today's safety tip is using your halligan for an anchor point. In case you have to rappel down a building immediately if you do a quick bailout and you can't find a substantial object to clip onto, you can use your halligan, this magic tool that opens doors. Just make a hole in the sheetrock, drop the halligan in so it's gonna dip into the hole, you're gonna tie it off the top, and then you're gonna be able to rappel right down using that halligan as an anchor point. Also, if you have wood floors in the house, just take your halligan, get it into the floor, loop this three half inches down, and then repel down. I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's safety tip is using a halligan for an anchor point. And remember, these tips save lives. Okay, we are back. Dane, let's see what we're doing. Victor, let's, let's do this. All right, so what's next? All right, so next we're gonna uh, saute our rice for about a minute in the pan with everything else going. It's about a cup and a third of rice. Okay. And you get this going here. Now that's gonna absorb all the juices. Yep. Okay. So I throw it around. 
So what's the um, what's the history? So some story about a storm pipe you were telling before? Yeah. The namesake for this building goes to, to a gentleman by the name of George M. Kingdom, who was killed in uh, World War Two, World War One. I'm sorry. Uh, so over the course of the course of time, certainly we've had a lot of renovations. Uh, when the major part of the building was built, uh, pretty good sized building. Of course, they come to realize they're going to need some antennas to talk. You're going to need some, gonna need some radios, you're going to need some antennas. Put a big old antenna on top of the roof. And uh, the guy's installing the antenna. You need four guy wires to attach to the roof. So I guess they went about attaching the guy wires to the proper attachment point. Mm -hmm. And I think the last guy wire, the guy that was doing it, was a little bit lazy. So instead of actually attaching it to the proper anchor point, they, in fact, wrapped it around the stink pipe, the soil pipe that comes up from the toilet, yeah, all, like, yeah, vents, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, gases. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there was a gentleman who worked here. I'm not sure if I should mention his name. He's long past, former fire chief. Um, whether he liked a lot of cheese or not, I'm not really sure, but he spent a lot of time on the, on the toilet. Okay. On one particular time, <laughs> one particular time, he's on the toilet. So bear in mind, the stink pipe goes right up, penetrates through the roof, vents all the gas. Happened, chief, the chief hap who happened to be on the toilet at the time was doing his business. And then there was a big thunderstorm. With thunder comes lightning. Well, didn't lightning strike that stink pipe, ran right down the pipe, and basically shocked him while he was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> My understanding is that uh, they thought he was screaming like a little schoolgirl. Okay. So uh, turned out he was okay. No injuries. That's a good one. I like that's okay. a great story. What's, what do we got? All right, so, all well, you guys are talking about stink pipes. You wait a minute, this looks different than it did before again. All right, danger goes on its own, that's it. Uh, we yeah. added a, about uh, three cups and a third of chicken stock, okay. uh, one and a quarter, eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, and now we're just gonna let the rice absorb all the liquid. Gonna cook this down, and then we're gonna get stuff our peppers. No, it's not peppers. Now, how long is, does this cook for? Uh, this cooks for about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, get it to like a almost a little bit of a rolling boil, and uh, mm -hmm. it'll suck. I mean, this looks out. like something you put on the pasta too. You know, something. Yeah, like, you can. It's it's. Yeah, I mean, it uh, looks delicious. Variations of how you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. Angel hair pasta is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, but you can do it over. Um, any type of linguine or shells. You know what I love that? Uh, you ever do the squash? We scoop out the squash. Spaghetti squash, yep. Spaghetti squash. Oh yep. my gosh, that is so delicious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that one, show. Um, all right. I hope you do the lasagna one. Oh no, I've never lasagna seen that. Spaghetti squash. Lasagna spaghetti oh, squash. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I get, okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll make yeah. that on the show. Yeah, all right. We, we might have to just make it like <laughs> and now, and now, because you were telling me now that mass appeal why don't you maybe come back and yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so maybe we'll have, we'll, have Dane and, uh, we'll have Dane and Victor as our visiting. <laughs> and let's go back down to Wilbraham for the special Dane and Victor segment of our show. Um, while this is cooking, uh, I have a fire fact for you guys, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's fire fact is the battering ram. Now, these aren't used that much anymore, but I figured I had to show. We're gonna get medieval. This battering ram was held by two firefighters, and they would pick it up, and they would smash it through doors that they couldn't get through. But there's a pretty cool thing on this. The brick side. This fork, they would use to take down brick walls in case they couldn't get in anywhere else, and they would take this to make a nice big hole. I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's fire fact is the battering ram. All right, now we're all cooked up. All cooked up. All cooked up we're for the looking good. Time. We're looking good. We are looking good. It's looking good. It's looking delicious. All the flavors have married. The uh, rice has absorbed all the liquid. So I got my fork ready. And <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and uh, stuff the peppers. You know what? I guess gotta do this first. I know I'm not ruining the whole taste because the peppers aren't here, but I gotta taste that shrimp. Your lips went on that fork before, were they? <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> this is good. Wow. Mm. Stuffing them up. Now, on the EMS uh, truck, you said it before, you asked me if I had one of those cans on our truck. Uh, it's called Narcan. It's uh, basically, it's a drug to reverse uh, narcotic overdoses. Okay. Uh, a lot of uh, departments now, uh, including police departments, uh, most of the fire departments that run paramedic units already have it. It's part of their drug bag makeup, uh, but now uh, because uh, heroin overdoses are uh, 
becoming a nationwide uh, epidemic, uh, especially Ooh. in Massachusetts. Um, they are getting first responders uh, to carry Narcan in the cruisers, uh, also first responder fire engines. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also doing that as well. Um, so it's making a big difference. Uh, lives are being saved with it. Um, how does it how does it work? Do you, do you know, I can't. <clears throat> Basically, it reverses uh, the effects of uh, a heroin overdose. Is Good. it a, a shot you give? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, it, it works wonders. It, it's actually absolutely saving lives. And can't say enough about it. Wow. You know, it needs to be promoted more uh, with uh, heroin <laughs> clinics. Uh, they're giving them to known heroin addicts mm -hmm. in case their friend overdoses. <clears throat> uh, they're able to shoot their friend up and it's... Uh, oh, oh so even civilians yep, can use yep, it. So. Yep. It's just right through the nose. It gets absorbed through the mucosal mem membrane. Oh, oh know. so it's not a needle. It's, it's both. You oh, can it's do both. Oh, you do both, both? Yep. or it could be an inhale. Right. Exactly. Wow, that's a, that's a good thing. And so uh, I wonder if they'd ever make them available to the public. Just like, I, I don't know. It's, it's getting promoting. that way. It'll, yeah. be, it'll be the way of AEDs, how AEDs are now okay. available. Okay. So. Wow, that's pretty cool. Wow, well, the Narcan. All right, I'm going to look into that. My ambulance probably has it. I'll check. I'll check the Bayport Fire Department. <laughs> Um, when you do the inventory. When I do the inventory. <laughs> when I do the inventory. We'll definitely, we'll definitely do that. All right. How are we looking, Rick? Let's take a look. Let's bring them over. I don't know. You, you're asking me. You got to ask Dane. Dane, how are they looking? They're looking great. So basically, uh, to finish them off, we put a little bit more of the tomato sauce on top. Uh, and then we're going to put them in the oven at 325 for about 15 minutes. And they should be ready after that. All right. So we're going to throw them in the oven, 325, 15 minutes. Yep. Then we'll plate them up. And then we'll have a taste. Excellent. We are sitting here on the apparatus floor. We usually don't do this. We usually don't eat on the apparatus floor. But hey, this is television for Firehouse Kitchen. Great idea. Why not? All right? Great idea. I'm ready to taste. Do I put the lemon on? Uh, a little bit of lemon and a little bit of Louisiana pepper sauce. And uh, dig right. in. A little bit of lemon. A little bit. If you guys watch Firehouse Kitchen, you know how I am with spicy food. But I'm gonna put a little bit of Louisiana pepper so I put a lot. Oh yeah. All right, yeah, I'm gonna be running you. to the bathroom and, and <laughs> I don't know. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh, there you go, sir. All right, I got the sauce in there. I want a piece of the pepper too, right? Yep. Absolutely. Wow, wow. Here we go. Yep, I wanna get every taste in this. So here we go. We need some shrimp, some sausage. And some pepper. Here we go. All right. We'll go for the taste. Ready, Dano? Ready. I'm ready. You ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's delicious. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Strong work, Dane. Great right recipe. On, this is spot on. I gotta tell uh, Captain Duffy over in uh, Springfield. No, this is delicious. <laughs> Good. This is like absolutely it. delicious. Quick and easy. Mmm. Mmm. And that spice is work. And I'm a big baby, right? <laughs> 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 to find out more about Firehouse Kitchen, go to firehousekitchenshow.com. To find out about our recipes, to find out how you can come on Firehouse Kitchen, or if you just want to see me, go to firehousekitchenshow.com. <laughs> Friend us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time on... Firehouse Kitchen! Kitchen. All right! Let's eat some peppers, all right? This is awesome. Great job, guys. This was a all lot right, of fun. Good. I appreciate it. I, I tell you, it was a great show. Great show.